Uh, I'd like to introduce somebody who's um, been instrumental. Uh, that's, a, that's the biggest understatement ever. Uh, been, been really critical to our success uh, as an athletic program and obviously as an, an institution as well. Uh, Dr. Hawkins has, has supported us uh, in every way possible, uh, along with our board of trustees, that they really give us the opportunity to be successful. And, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's uh, me being very genuine. There are places around this country where that doesn't happen. Uh, but here, our trustees and our chancellor are behind what we're doing, and that's why we've been able to be successful. So at this time, I'd like to call to the podium uh, Chancellor Jack Hawkins. Thank, thank you, Jeremy. And let me uh, I hasten to say to you and Chrissy how much we appreciate the, the leadership you're providing. So thank you so much. Uh, it's a special privilege for me to share a few comments with you this morning. Let me introduce my, my first lady, uh, Janice Hawkins. Would you uh, thank you for being here? <laughs> and and I, I, everyone in this room, everyone in the Trojan family is special. Uh, I can't introduce everybody. I can only say how special you are, but there are a few people I did want to uh, introduce to you. They begin with our, our board of trustees. And I've said this uh, far and wide, uh, you could look anywhere in this country and not find a better governing board than our trustees. They're, they're in, they are solidly, and if you don't believe that, just go to a football game and you'll see almost every one of them at every game. And some even, like Mr. Lamar Higgins on the field down there taking pictures, which he gives back to the players at the end of the season. So they, they're invested, and it begins with uh, our, our president pro tem. Please hold your applause, we can recognize them as a group. Uh, Senator Gerald Dow, who was no, uh, he was not unknown to football because he was a coach at one time. And uh, Senator, if you'll just remain standing, uh, uh, the Honorable uh, Alan Owen, who was a, who played as a Trojan uh, many years ago, the Honorable Lamar Higgins, who is totally invested in this program. Uh, Miss Karen Carter, the Honorable Karen Carter, and I might add that uh, not only is uh, Karen a member of our Board of Trustees, she also chairs our Foundation uh, Board of Directors. A uh, gentleman who is uh, one of the best mayors in America, Mayor Earl Johnson from Andalusia. We're delighted that, uh, that the Honorable Johnson uh, is here. Uh, Honorable Charles Nalen from Dothan, who also chaired at one time for many years our Board of uh, directors of the foundation. Uh, and Mr. Forrest Latta, Honorable Forrest Latta from Mobile, we appreciate you and uh, the great support you give us, uh, Forrest, down in, the, in, in uh, the, the southwest part of the state. The Honorable uh, uh, Gibson Vance, and uh, Gibson is uh, with the Beasley Allen firm, and I, in, a, in particular, I want to say to you, thank you for your in, involvement in the contract review of our new coach. Uh, we find every way that we can to get outstanding help free. <laughs> and, and, and before they sit down, uh, let, and I hope I haven't missed anyone, I appreciate so much uh, all of you being here, members of our foundation board. And our foundation board is so invested in this university. We have about $170 million in public private investments, and so it shows you how really important our foundation is to the university. Uh, Mr. Jeff Coleman, who also, if you look at that 18-wheeler that has uh, uh, Trojans on the side, he has provided that for years. Jeff, thank you so much. It carries our football gear everywhere across this country. And uh, also the foundation director, Mr. John Ferguson. John, thank you for you, for you being here. Members of the key members of the executive staff and all of you, please uh, join me in saying thank you for their service. You know, I, I, most of you have heard me say, the, I think these are the best of times. Uh, we've never had a better faculty. We've never had better students. I, I think our facilities speak for themselves, and I certainly hope that our athletic facilities make a statement, too, in terms of the commitment of our board and the university. Uh, but these are great times. But we're also at a great spot, too, in the Sunbelt Conference. Many of you have followed our conference affiliation, and you know uh, the challenges we faced but we're, we're getting there. We had the highest finish among all group of five universities uh, for the third year in a row. 
And we're only uh, third place, but we're only five percentage points behind the Mountain West, which tells you how far we have come. We have the best G5 non-conference winning percentage. In fact, we were the only conference uh, in the group of five this year that didn't lose a game to FCS level programs. And we have the best three-year bowl record of all 10 conferences. And so we've not only proven it on the field, but uh, our students have proven it in the classroom and our student athletes. And this is a great tribute to our faculty and our staff, especially in athletics. They've had the, a higher GPA than the student body for the last several years. And so not only are we seeing good student athletes, they're good students. The tradition at this university has been in place a long time. It's hard really to have a creative thought because somebody probably has had it before, but football began in 1909 at Troy University and our first coach, as many of you know, was Virgil Parks McKinley, the son of John McKinley, who later became the CEO and chairman of the board of Texaco. Virgil Parks McKinley put his first team on the field and he went at season's end as undefeated. His first game was against Union Springs. <laughs> and they tied zero to zero. <laughs> the second game, they beat Edgar School six to nothing. And the last game, again, was against Union Springs. And again, they tied zero to zero. And so, Chip, our first season here was undefeated. <laughs> But what's most important is the, the first football coach retired after that year undefeated. <laughs> we want to be able to, for you to be able to say that, and we want to say that about you years from, years from today. So great tradition, but it didn't begin yesterday. It, it uh, began way back when, and we've had just a series of uh, great coaches. And you know, this is not really about football today. This is about leadership. This is about leadership, uh, beginning with Virgil Parks McKinley, but it continued and was manifest, and many of you in this room today were, you were here in the 60s when we won that first mythical national championship in 1968, and you saw what that meant in terms of how this program is viewed. That continued in the 80s with uh, Chan Gailey and Rick Rhodes and national championships. In December of 1990, we made a critical appointment and that was when Coach Larry Blakeney was appointed as the head football coach. And think about what happened over the 24 years that followed. He helped build a foundation. And you go through life standing on the shoulders of giants, and he was certainly one of those giants. And then four years ago, we hired a young man by the name of Neil Brown. Neil Brown entered this university, re-entered it, having been here before, with dignity. But I can tell you, having experienced meetings with him just in the last few days he left this place with dignity and honor and uh, as he sat uh, sat in my office two days ago he reflected on what this meant not only in his career but also in his professional development I told uh, Neil that uh, one of the ingredients two of the ingredients that we then began to look for and make sure that we found in his successor the basic things, integrity, integrity, uh, success. You know, the best barometer for what you can do is what you've done, right? Success. Uh, Chip Lindsay's background is one of success. So was Neil Brown's. Proven experience at the very highest level. But let me tell you what made the real difference in the leadership, in my estimation, of Neil Brown. And we believe that we have that same quality in Chip Lindsey. Neil Brown, in my opinion, not only had a CEO mentality, he could see holistically how things fit together and what needed to be done. But the key in life, and if you deal with the details, the big problems take care of themselves. And what I saw in Neil Brown, and I know this was manifest in his players and the way he did things, was an attention to detail, seeing the big picture, but also doing it with integrity, winning in the right way, and taking care of those details. So I want to welcome uh, Chip. I'm going to call on Jeremy, and he'll fill in all the blanks and make the official announcement. 
But before I do that, I want to thank Jeremy McLean. Uh, we didn't use a very expensive service or firm to conduct this search, which is typically the case. Our, our firm was sitting just to my left. <laughs> and I want to thank, thank Jeremy for having done it. He, uh, he spent uh, a lot of time in the last several weeks doing it, doing it the right way, looking for the right things, uh, just the way he spends his every day at Troy University. And I want to thank Jeremy for his leadership. I want to welcome the family, Cecily. Thank you for being part of this. And, uh, and we look forward and we welcome you back. So you're, you're not an unknown quantity. We know that. But to the, to the children, Claire, Caroline, Cooper, and Connor, I love the way that you've been systematic in keeping it. <laughs> even, even I can remember things like that. I have this formula that I use. But I also want to welcome, too, members of the, of the family that uh, have been so influential in Chip's development, his parents, Rick and Judy. And I understand, uh, Rick, uh, that we have something in common. You have something in common with a lot of these, including Senator Dow. Uh, you were a military guy. You fought and flew helicopters in Vietnam. And so I know that Chip has been raised in the right way. So I applaud you for that. Let me say again how delighted we are to be able to gather in this place, in this beautiful place that all of us love. Uh, and I think this is probably one of the most important announcements that we'll make in the next several years. So Chip, family, welcome back to Troy. We look forward to seeing you often. And it's my pleasure to ask uh, uh, our AD, Jeremy McLean, to the lectern. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, Dr. Hawkins. You know, in, in our jobs, there's not a lot of times that uh, I speak after Dr. Hawkins, and uh, <laughs> I'm just reminded why that's a good thing. Um, no, but I, but I do need to say thank you again um, to our Board of Trustees, to Dr. Hawkins. I, I thank you for the support, but I appreciate the confidence in me. And, uh, you know, I think you all know um, what this job means to me and what Troy means to me. And so uh, it means a lot to me that you've placed that level of confidence in me. So, so thank you so much for, for that and for your support. Uh, Mr. Gibson Vance, thank you again for your help. Mr. Jeff Coleman, we appreciate you helping us uh, get it done and make it happen. And uh, as always, um, you know, you don't do these things by yourself or it's not just a few people. It's a lot of people helping make it happen. So thank you very much to those who've been an instrumental part of that. Uh, and I want to say too, thank you to Sandy Atkins and Brent Jones, our two deputy ADs who, who uh, kind of were in the trenches with me the past uh, week trying to get this thing done and, and logistics, sounding boards. Uh, they've been great and, and, and they're great leaders for our program, as is all of our staff, athletic staff here, but, but these two guys really uh, did a great job during this search of helping me through that process. So, so thank you guys. I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, th this process. Everybody's kind of always curious about how does this happen. Uh, you know, and, and there's a couple of things I'll, I'll share with you. Some of it I can't, obviously, but, um, you know, there's some things I'll share with you about this search process and how we got to this point. Uh, first thing I want to say is, you know, we've got a long history of success here at Troy. Dr. Hawkins talked about that from a football perspective. We've had a, you know, we've been successful for many, many years. Um, but the past three years, we, we, we have raised the bar. We're, we're at a level now that we have, we've never seen a, as an institution and as a program. And so that was, you know, three 10-win seasons in a row, uh, three bowl victories in a row. Uh, we set new attendance records. Uh, we built this north end zone facility, which, you know, it, it, it is, is really the envy of, of, of anybody we talk to and uh, has had a huge impact on our program already. Uh, so we're at a place now well, we've never been. And so when we started this search, the focus was on finding someone, to use a football term, who could take the ball and run with it. And I told our players, I've got zero interest in taking a step backwards. The guy we hire is going to be the guy we feel like can, can take what we've done and build on the foundation and run with it and continue to raise the bar. Uh, and that's high expectations. And, and Chip and I, he knows that. He and I have had that conversation. He knows where we're at. And he embraces that. And so that was how we started this search process. Um, and, and let me tell you this, it wasn't, this didn't start five days ago, six days ago. Um, this has been a, you know, probably a, at least a three-year process. Um, and and, I, and I'm, I'm being very serious about that. 
Um, the day that, that I got here, and I knew Neil before I got here, but I knew he wasn't going to be here that long because he had some opportunities he probably couldn't pass up. And, uh, and I need to say what we're talking about our success the last three years, I need to thank Neil and his staff uh, and our players for what they poured into this program. I, I don't want to finish today without saying that. I'm very thankful for them, and, and they, they have helped raise the bar, and, 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 and you know, we wouldn't be here, obviously, where we are without them. Um, you know, but we wanted someone who could take the ball and run with it. And, uh, and, and so the process started really when, when, you know, three years ago. We list of names, you continue to keep up with what's happening around the country. But in December, when uh, Neil's phone started ringing a lot, uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll be honest with you guys, there, there are times Neil didn't answer those calls. Um, but some of the opportunities that really made sense for he and his family, he, you know, when his phone started ringing, we started working on our list and, 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 and on background checks. We started working, you know, and I had some people who helped me in the industry, uh, former coaches who, who, would, who would make calls for me if I had questions about guys. So this started in December. Uh, now, I thought we were finished with the process. Uh, I was ready for the new year, and, and that's not how it worked out. And, 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 and so when this happened, we were well down the road on what we thought, you know, at least what we thought of the, the candidates on our list. And so what we were looking for in somebody to take the ball and, and run with it was, and I'll just give you kind of our profile. Uh, we wanted somebody who understood Troy. There are a lot of great football coaches in this country, uh, but Troy's a special place. And, and I wanted someone who could understand and relate to the people in this room, uh, the people in that locker room, who understood what we were about and what our culture was about as an institution. You know, we wanted, I, I didn't want to have, and again, I said this a minute ago, I didn't want to start from scratch. I wanted someone who could take it and run with it. And so someone who, who offensively understood what we had been doing, defensively understood what we had been doing, and didn't, didn't have a strong need to feel like they needed to start from scratch. Um, someone who could, you know, really maintain our identity. Um, you know, the evaluation of the staff was important to me. Uh, every, everyone who was on the previous staff, you know, how, how are we going to talk to those guys about what their roles are and, and, and do they have an opportunity to stay here? Uh, is there some continuity in, in that staff? So those things were important. Um, could they recruit this area? Did they understand the region? Had, do they have contacts in this area? And th that was really critical for me to make sure that we, again, could continue uh, at a really, really high level. Had they been a coordinator at a high level? And so, and maybe everyone doesn't understand this, but when you're a coordinator, you have a different set of responsibilities than you do as, as an assistant coach. Uh, you, you hiring, you're firing people, you're, you're part of that process, you're managing a room. And, and so those things were important, I thought, to, to be a part of this process. Um, and most importantly, we wanted someone who could connect, connect to our players and who could get the most out of our student athletes and turn them into the best version of themselves. That, I said that last, but that was the most critical part uh, of our process and our profile. So when we sat down with candidates, there, there, there was one person who checked all the boxes uh, and blew us away, quite honestly. So when Chip sat down across from me in, in, in that ho hotel suite and uh, we started talking about Troy football and what it, what it means to him and, and the fact that he's, he's had his eye on this job for so long, you know, and, and what his presence and his vision for what we can be as a program, uh, you know, it became evident really quickly that, that, that he was a guy that uh, would be a perfect fit for Troy. You know, and so when you sit down with Chip, and, and you guys will see this, everybody in this room is going to get a chance to meet him at some point, uh, there's an instant comfort level. And, and I'm going back to what I said earlier, there's a great comfort with him. He makes you feel uh, very comfortable and feel like you're very important. And, uh, and that carries over to our players. It's not just people in this room, but our players are going to feel the same way about him. And he, he had a great, you know, the perfect combination for us, I think, of, of doing it at a high level as a coordinator, but also being a high school coach and being a very, very su high, successful high, high school coach in the states of Alabama and Georgia. And that's going to that's gonna serve him so well in this position as our head football coach. But, but really, above all else, the most impressive quality uh, with Chip is, is who he is. And uh, I've known him for quite some time. We've crossed paths a couple of times. And, and, and his most impressive quality is who he is as a person. And, and that's important to me. And it's important to this institution that we hire good people who are about the right things. And Chip Lindsay is about the right things. And so I told you we had some people working kind of behind the scenes for us, former coaches who could get in touch with people that maybe, you know, I didn't have time to. And, and so I told him, I said, uh, 
I need you to find out something negative on Chip Lindsay. That's your job. So uh, that went on for like six days. And he kept calling me back and going, hey, man, I, I, I can't find anything. I said, well, keep calling. Call so-and-so. Call so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, it never happened. Not once. And, and that is hard to do in this industry. Chip, as a coach, there, there are some people you, you make mad. As an AD, there's some people you make mad. So it's hard to do. But not once did anybody who had worked with him or played for him have anything negative to say. They all said, he's a fantastic person. He's an outstanding coach. He will absolutely get it done at Troy. It's a perfect fit. And so for me, that was it. When, when, when you can leave, leave places and, and leave people that way, I think that says a lot about you as a person and about, uh, about the fit here at Troy. So there's no doubt in my mind Chip Lindsay's the right guy for us. And I'm thrilled to welcome him to Troy and welcome his family. Um, you, you guys will get a chance to know them. They're, they're fantastic and are going to be great additions to, to our community. So, so we welcome you guys and excited to continue to get to know you better. So at this time, I'd like to call our next head football coach of Troy University, Chip Lindsay, to the podium. Thank you so much. It's uh, such an honor to be here and standing here in front of you today as the new head football coach here at Troy University. Uh, I'm unbelievably uh, humbled by the turnout today. I mean, just, just outstanding. This place is, uh, that's why it's a special place. Um, the only thing I'll say is I'm, I'm really glad Jeremy didn't call my wife. I'd probably got a few <laughs> negative things. But, but, you messed that up, so. Just extremely excited to be back home. I consider you know, this a, a unique place and a special place for me and my family. Uh, even my kids, they learned to swim right across the street here when I was renting a university home. Uh, we had a lot of great memories here. Really just a, a, a unique place. And, and I'm just you know, honored to be leading this program. And I hope you know that. I take a lot of pride in that. It, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's going to be a, a, a excitement every day. Every day I get up, I mean, like today I got up and I said, I can't believe I'm the head football coach here. And uh, so I'm really excited. This is a dream for me, a dream come true. And I'm going to tell you a story why, why that matters in just a few minutes. I, I want to thank a few people to start with. Obviously, I want to start with our chancellor, Dr. Hawkins, for giving me this opportunity. Um, this is uh, something that I take very serious and uh, I just really appreciate it. I'm going to do uh, do everything I can to, to make you proud and, and everybody here proud, but uh, really, really appreciate this opportunity. I want to thank our Board of Trustees. I met all, almost all of you, I think, and some of you I knew from my first uh, stint here, and you guys are unbelievable the way you support this university, the mission, and the things that go along with all aspects of our university in athletics. I think you can just look out the window and see that, but uh, you guys make this place special, and I know that that uh, you know, with our leadership and, and you guys uh, doing what you do, it makes a difference for our student athletes, and uh, we really do appreciate it. Thank you for entrusting me to to take this step and and, and lead this program. I want to thank Jeremy. Obviously, uh, you know, I, I, we did cross paths, and uh, always just was so impressed with him. I used to go over to his office when I was an offensive coordinator. At, at Southern Miss and I would sit and we would just talk you know we're both former baseball guys you probably don't realize that but I I coached baseball for a long time and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute but Jeremy and I would go and we just sit down and uh, honestly there was a little bit motive behind me because I knew he was a rising star on that side of it and uh, I said I hope he remembers me one day you know <laughs> and here we are so uh, we had a lot of great conversations and, and there was times you know in, in this profession and coaching I don't know if you I mean, there's, there's highs and lows. The highs are high and the lows are low, so to speak, you know. And there's times I would crawl over there, you know, and, 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 and cry on his shoulder, so to speak, and he always was so positive. His leadership here is obvious. You know, you can tell the way things go here, and, and uh, I think he's been a breath of fresh air for everyone from the standpoint of you always want a guy who's you, the, the athletic director that you can go to and talk to, a guy that's a real, 
a real person that's uh, and I think Jeremy he's proven that uh, his leadership is incredible here I want to take a few minutes to introduce my family if I don't then it, it might be a long few days so I want to make sure I do that uh, obviously my wife Cecily she's here she's been uh, really supportive of my career this profession is unique as you know and some of you are in sales and do different things where you travel a lot and you're you know our hours are crazy I mean the last few days have been unbelievable and uh, she's always been great been very supportive taking care of the, of the family and so forth um, so want to thank her all the things she's done my children are here uh, my oldest Claire she's up here in the front uh, she's very unique. She's 14 years old. You've got 14 year old daughters, so, but she's been great. So supportive of my career, all of them. Um, Caroline is, is, is my twin daughter. Cooper, obviously, uh, is her twin, right? And, uh, you know, just anything. I got Connor there on the end, and uh, he's, uh, these, these, guys, these kids right here, they, you know, they, they, they understand my career, they understand what we do. Uh, but the one thing I'll never do is I always want to be a good father. I always want to be you know be there and, and have that balance and I think that's critical to success and I think our players need to see that I think our players need to know that you're a good husband you're a good father and uh, I think that helps influence them you know I mentioned you know my background I'm a high school coach at heart that's what I did forever I really had dreams of being a high school head football coach at a little place called Colbert Heights in uh, North Alabama some of you may know uh, that was my dream that was what I wanted to do you know and here I am today and you know for a long time I was a baseball coach and uh, I learned from a, from a guy a little bit, uh, Coach Bobby Pierce, and uh, he was a college coach up there at UAH, and I had a couple of my friends that played for him, and, you know, I, I really learned a lot of things from, from just going to his practice and watching, you know, and I learned some things that I probably wouldn't want to say, but I learned some good things. <laughs> I'm kidding. He was unbelievable. He, he did an unbelievable job motivating his players. And it wasn't just about coaching baseball, but it was about he led that group. And then we ended up working here together some in 2010, and I've always followed him. And, and uh, you know, I was a head baseball coach for seven years, and just, just just that was how I kind of started in the profession. They'll give you an opportunity in baseball when you're young because there's not a lot of money in it, and nobody else wants to do it. So you, you, they give it to the young guy, and that's what I did. The principal hired me one time, and he said, you got the job. Nobody else wanted it, so good luck. <laughs> and that's what he did. So. But, you know, I was also a teacher. Uh, my, my mom's a retired school teacher. My dad's a retired administrator as well as um, uh, retired from the military. And, you know, the, the, the teaching profession is, is so unique and it's, and it's so powerful because of the impact you have on, on the kids, right, at that age, especially in the high school level at that age they are. And I really, really enjoyed that time. And really that's kind of what I want on our staff. I want a, a staff full of really good teachers and communicators and people that can be a great influence on our players. That's important to me. I think relationships are the number one thing and you'll see that out of our staff and that's important to me. If you all, everybody in this room probably played high school sports of some sort and you all, you all had a high school coach, right, that if you did that had an influence on your life. Maybe some weren't great but some, most of us had somebody that we really connected with because of that age we were and I think relationships are the number one thing, and that's what we'll do here with our players, just like it's been done in the past. You know, I'm a dreamer. That's what, you know, I dreamed of, uh, of being the head football coach in college one day. That was when I got into college football. And, uh, you know, I, Coach Blakeney hired me here in 2010, right out of high school. I'd had some success in high school, and I re actually replaced Neil the first time he left. So it was a little history there, uh, <laughs> which... Just unique, you know, and uh, Neil's great. We've been friends forever. We've been since since he became a player, you know, since he got through playing. And I was a little older than him, but uh, always we stayed in touch. We visited in the off season. We traded ideas. We traded, you know, not just plays, okay, but I mean the way you handle your program, the way you organize your program, the way you motivate people, and so he's been a huge influence just from a standpoint of a friend you can bounce ideas off of. But Coach Blakeney hired me and. When he did, uh, I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I was in, in college football, and I, I came over, and, and uh, we were talking one day, and, you know, we walked out on the field, and, and he said, you know, Chip, tell me what your dreams are. Tell me what you want to do one day. I said, I want to be a head football coach here at Troy when you, when you retire. And he said, really? I said, yeah. He said, well, I ain't retiring no time soon. So <laughs> I said, well, well, I said, maybe down the road one day. And, uh, but he told me, right, standing out there on the field, you know, obviously none of that was there. He said, there's three things you need to remember. And I said, okay, coach, because, you know, he's a great mentor. And he said, you know, Troy's a special place. And it's not special because we're winning and we've won championships. It's really special because of the people. 
he re- and you know I, I thought yeah you know that was when I first got here and but after spending time here and 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 building some relationships and seeing it, he's exactly right that's what makes this place it's not about the brick and mortar all the time it's about the people in it you know and I think that was a huge learning uh, point for me at that time in my career the second thing he said he said never forget that we're here for our players first that's the number one reason we got this job, right? That's the number one reason you have a football coach. It's for the student athletes. And that's that I want to make sure every day, and I, we've done that everywhere I've been, is that the number one thing, what's the best thing for our players? So any decision we make, how does it affect our players? Is it the best thing for our guys? And I think your players, they see that, they feel that, and you're going to get more out of them when they know you, get, you, you care for them. And then the third thing he said was always treat people right. You know, treat – the the treat everybody in the building like you would want to be treated and i thought you know those are three really simple and basic things that he shared with me it wasn't like hey mate i want you to run this on third down and seven or anything (laughs) it wasn't x's and o's it was all about treating people and in the leadership positions i think you have to remember those things you have to remember the basic things in life that that you learn when you're a child that your parents try to teach you that you try to teach your own children that who sometimes don't listen like they should but you know I think those are the things, those are the keys to success in life. And I remember him standing right out there and telling me that and uh, took it with me everywhere I went. I'm looking forward to reconnecting with this great community. You know, this is a, a place that really cares about this university. Obviously, I remember filling up this stadium, the vet, and it's rocking. Our students are unbelievable, and I've seen that even grow. And, and Neil did a great job with that. that I want to say, Neil, and that staff that he had there, and a lot of those guys I hope will be around. Some will, some will move on with other opportunities. I understand that. But did a great job of establishing a culture, you know, and building on the foundation Coach Blakeney started, and Neil took it to another level, and we're going to continue to do the same thing, and we're going to take it to our own. Everybody puts their own spin on it, and uh, but but the core values and the things that we believe in will always be the same. And I think that's extremely important. There's an electric atmosphere in this stadium when it's rocking. I've seen it on those Tuesday night games, right? We were trying to prepare for a game, and I'm sitting there trying to watch Troy play. I always watched him. You can Cecily will tell you that. It's what I want to do. I wasn't watching the SEC and all that. I wanted to see Troy play, and it was always on a night that we could see it. And it was just amazing watching these kids play and the effort and the energy and the passion that they seemed to always play with. And a lot of people don't want to play us for that reason. So um, Trojan Walk, you know, just thinking through Trojan I'm going to do Trojan Walk now as the head coach here. That's unbelievable. You know, it's an unbelievable honor for me to be able to do that. I think our fan support's second to none. It really is. And it's a huge reason why I want to come back here. Okay, now a lot of these jobs you say, well, I'm going to go to this job, and, and coach started a, a, a job from scratch, and there, you know, it's a rebuild. Just blow it up and start over. I understand it's not that way here, I, and, I, and I'm really embracing that. That's a challenge. That, that, that motivates me every day, okay? It would, and, and I'm excited about it. That's fun because I think we're in a good spot. We just got to get, get it going and, and go play, right, and build those relationships with these players, and we got time to do that, but I'm excited. I think that was a huge positive about coming back here. Moving forward, I'm excited to get started. Like I said, I want to build on this championship culture that's been established, and I'm going to do that. The foundation's been laid by the two previous coaches before me who were great coaches here. Uh, Dr. Hawkins mentioned a lot of a lot of great coaches that have been here, and, and he's right. And it started um, with the first coach here, and I hope to live up to that, that, uh, that standard. That's going to be tough, but uh, if we can get those guys on the schedule, maybe we'll have a challenge, you know? So. But the one thing I'll say is we're going to play a fun and exciting brand of football. Okay, I hope you can casually watch us play and, and really not see a whole lot of difference in style. That's what my goal is. That's why I want to make sure we, we have the opportunity to maybe retain some guys. I want our players to have a smooth transition. I wanted to, to – and I've talked to them. I had a great meeting with those guys, our team, yesterday. They were so dialed in and locked in. And I think I, – I hope and I think I put a lot of them at ease by getting a feel for me and how this transition is going to take place. I was very open with them about the next step and how we're going to go about this. I talked to all our commits last night. Uh, they're all fired up. You know how when change happens and you're 17, 18 years old, you go, oh, well, maybe I need to do this or that. Every one of them to a man gave me confidence that they're coming to Troy and there's no issues there. They have no regrets. And I told every one of them, you, tro- you chose to come to Troy for a lot of reasons, right? It wasn't just one reason. Yeah, you had a special relationship with an assistant coach or whatever. That makes sense. I understand that. But it also, you came here because it's Troy, because it's special. And that's why you're going to come to Troy and, and, and be great. And I tell them all the time, when you decide to come to Troy, your dreams are mine. 
Now I'm going to help you get to them, and you got to follow, and you got to do the things we ask you to do, but your dreams become my dreams because if they're successful, we're successful. It all works together, and that's kind of the way I feel. We have a talented roster returning. I do realize that. Now there's some holes we got to fill in the recruiting, and we're going to do that, but I love the attitude. I recruited some of these guys at different spots, so I know a lot of the roster, and that, I think that's a huge advantage. There won't be as much, oh, we'll see if this guy can do this or that. I think that's a huge advantage. Our goal is continue to win championships and remain one of the premier group of five programs. That's what, we're, that's what we're here for. That's our goal every day. That's what we talk about, and we'll continue to hold up to that standard. Our facilities, they're breathtaking. They really are. We walked in this building. Cecily walked in the other night when she got here, and I was blown away. I had not been in the new building until yesterday, lunchtime, um, and I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. And I, and I want to thank you guys that were involved in that. Jeremy, Dr. Hawkins, and everybody here, because it's unbelievable. And you have no idea what that, in this whole campus, I mean, I, you know, I drove through campus the other day. Obviously, you know, you go right here by baseball, and we're building a new student rec center and all the new, the new dining hall. Uh, it, it's unbelievable what, what's been done here. And without, you know, your support, your help, and you driving the boat, it couldn't happen. So I just think it's unbelievable. And you talk about getting a recruit here. You're not, you're not embarrassed to take him anywhere. You want him to see everything, okay? So it's easy to fill a recruiting weekend when you can do that, okay? So our facilities were se are second to none, and I think that's going to help us continue to have success. We're going to recruit Alabama first. That's what we're going to do. I think Neil and his staff did an unbelievable job of doing that. When I, I would see them out when I was recruiting, uh, we got to turn over every rock and, and find those guys that we can develop and then steal a few of those guys and, and get them to come to Troy because – you know, they got options. Obviously, now there's more schools and all that, but we got a great product to sell. We're going to do that. And then all the areas, the surrounding areas are important. And then the biggest thing is I'm getting a staff together that's tenacious, that has energy, that has great character, men of character that want to represent us in the right way and will go out and, and, and really try to get quality people here in our program. That's important to me. You know, this job, I had somebody ask me why I wanted this job. Why do you, why do you want this job? And I said, you know, it's really simple. It's ext I'm extremely familiar with Troy, first of all. It's coming home for me. I'm, from, I'm an Alabamian. I'm from here. I know all about the tradition. I know all about the uniqueness of this place. And the great foundations in place. Why would you want to come somewhere where they've won 10 games three years in a row? Why would you want to come here? Because you know what? It doesn't matter when, when you come here. That's been done here, right? We've won a lot of championships here. We've had great seasons here. I'd rather do that than go to a place where you got to start over. So that was exciting to me. I'm going to embrace that and challenge I have, and, and I'm looking forward to getting started for sure. You know, yesterday I spoke to the team. There was really – I wanted to leave you with this. There were four things that I think are our pillars, our foundation. Every coach has that. Neil had his. Coach Blakeney had – everybody's got their own spin on it, right? But I think these four things are important to me, and I think these four things can help our players through life and our program. It's the kind of people we want. We want – Four things that, that our pillars are, are character. We want men of character. If we, that's, that's important. You want guys that you can trust are going to make this really good decision. Is there going to be a guy that makes a mistake? Sure. We were all young at one time. But if they have character, you can trust those guys. We want guys that are smart, smart football players. Okay? I'm not going to sit here and tell you I was the smartest student when I was. My mom will attest to that when I was in school. But we want smart players who are smart players in life, on the field, off the field, I think that helps you be a better football team. Discipline. Discipline's important. Hard to win when you're an undisciplined team. You know, I want us to always be in, the, in leading the league in penalties. I want us to always to make sure that we're ranked high, that we're fewest penalized team in the league. I want us to make sure that we're disciplined on the field and off the field. What does that mean? Go to class, right? Act the right way. Be respectful to people. And it's harder and harder with social media today. You know, my kids, me included sometimes. You're looking at that phone, right? Look people in the eye, shake their hand. The basic things of being, uh, you know, of being a good person. That's what we want to do, and that's what we want to promote. And then the last thing was tough. We want, ca we want guys that are tough mentally and tough physically. And the mental side is probably more important because you're probably not recruiting them if they're not tough physically, to be honest. But character, smart, discipline, tough. That's what you'll hear. That's what our players will hear. And I'm excited to get that. And then your mantra. What, do you, what, do you, what is it every day that keeps you going? What is that? Well, our three things will be energy, attitude, and body language. That's so important. You know, energy. We want guys with great energy. We want coaches with great energy. Excited to, to get up every day and be a part of this program. Attitude. Coach me, coach attitude. 
How many of you have coached Little League or something in your career? I'm sure there's a lot. Guys are, are uncoachable. They don't want to listen, right? They don't want to listen to you. They don't want to help. You don't, they don't want to listen to you helping them. We want guys that are coachable, that have a great attitude, team first attitude. That's what we're looking for in body language. Nothing I can stand worse than bad body language. Quarterback throws incomplete, slumps down. We we'll get him out. You know, I just I don't want that. I want guys with great energy, attitude, body language, represent our program like we should. Again, I want to thank you for being here today. Uh, you know, we're going to develop Troy men on and off the field. That's a mission of ours. That's a goal of mine. That's what we want to do. We want to be Sun Belt champions every year. Obviously, we want to win every game we play. That's that's why we're doing it, right? And then we want to become the, the premier Group of Five program in the country. That's our goal. That's our mission. Compete in a New Year's Day Bowl. Usually one gets to do that, right? We need to be that team. That needs to be our goal. That needs to be what drives us. And if we'll do all the other little things right, Dr. Hawkins mentioned the details. If you take care of the details, big things happen. We're excited about that. I want to really thank everyone for coming. This is an unbelievable turnout. I really appreciate that. We'll work every day to make you proud, continue to be proud of this great program. And I can't wait to meet and speak with every one of you, okay? Go Trojans.